Hello and welcome to another episode of Digital Monday. This is the last episode in the three-part series that we've been kind of that I've been talking about regarding um, the three steps you need to do to make sure you have perfect prints every single time on the F2100. First one was do your maintenance right. Make sure you have a good nozzle check. Second step was to make sure you pre-treat right. Make sure you pre-treat properly with the right ratios, the right speed to avoid staining, use good quality pre-treat, and you can get good results every single time. Always got to use a pre-treat machine, the Mr. T1, Lawson, there's a number of good ones out there. Um, pre-treat properly, that's important. But three, in my opinion, the most popular or the most important step is using a good quality shirt. So let me open up this slide and show you what a carded open-ended cotton looks like. These are your budget blanks. These are the, sh these are the blanks that you're going to find that are the less expensive. They're not rated as ring spun. So they have, they're considerably more fibrous. The weave isn't nearly as tight and the print is a little bit more, is never, you can never get it as tight as you could on say a hundred percent combed ring spun, um, where your, your, your fiber, your, your thread is actually a really nice tight weave. Um, and you can always get really nice, crisp, clean prints out of it. So always look for open end or for car, uh, some combed ring spun, combed ring spun cotton shirts. There's a number of good ones out there. Um, uh, Cotton Heritage, Spectra, Fruit of the Loom Soft Spun, Bella Canvas, Next Level, uh, Just Hoods USA makes an awesome hood, uh, hoodie. So there's a number of really good ones out there. These are the shirts that we recommend you using to get the best results. So here's an example. It's kind of hard to see. Um, we're going to print this today. Um, we're going to print this on a carded, open-ended uh, budget blank, and we're also going to print it on a, a, on a Cotton Heritage nice tightly woven uh, ring spun blank. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing we do on one as the other. We're gonna use the same pre-treat settings, same amount of pre-treat, and we're gonna use the exact same garment creator settings, same amount of ink, and let's look at the differences and what we get. So we are using Epson pre-treat for this one. This is 50-50, 50% water, 50% Epson pre-treat. So here's the Cotton Heritage shirt. These are, we're going to set the standard here with 50-50 um, round trip four. So we're going to be 50-50 pre-treat to water. Uh, we are using Epson pre-treat. Uh, we're doing round trip four. We're not doing the whole shirt. Uh, let's get it in and get it started. Nice even spray. Nice clean pre-treat machine will allow for that. There we go. There's our cotton heritage. So this is our design for these for this black shirt. I wanted to use a picture of a person because people often say, hey, it's hard to get a good quality picture of a person on a dark shirt. Um, and I argue that vehemently and show you how good this quality can be. So we're doing level five, not level six. People would say we need level six here. We do not. Um, I'm going to bump up color to five, density to um, density and color to five. White density to 15. I'm going to reduce the under, white underbase to three just so it chokes it back a little bit. And let's see what this looks like on a Cotton Heritage and on uh, a different brand. Nice bright whites there. Level five. Not a lot of white ink going down. Definitely no need for a double pass on this one. People say, John, I just can't get good pictures of people on dark shirts with white underbase. Well, I'm about to prove you wrong. You know, even as much as, as long as I've been doing this, I'm still always just so impressed with the quality. It's so fun. DTG is fun. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. And it's easy to do it right, folks. Just follow my three simple steps. Look how awesome that is. Four, three, two, one, blast off. Let's see how she looks. Well, it looks as good as when it came off the off the printer. I'm telling you. Printing on dark garments never was so easy. All right, so we're going to do round trip four here on the Mr. T1. We don't need to cover the whole shirt, so we're going to leave this part open and just hit the kind of the the front, save a little bit of pre-treat. Um, push it in here, nice clean pre-treat machine. Let's start it up. Nice. So that's the same application on this shirt is on the Cotton Heritage. Same applications. 
same pre-treated application, same ink settings, but this is a carded open-ended garment, cotton garment, as opposed to the combed ring spun garment. And it's very evident in the white how much differently the ink is laying down. So let's see after the color goes down, let's see what she looks like. And boy, even on this shirt that isn't ideal, it still looks pretty doggone good again. So impressed with this technology. But let's let it print out and um, see what she looks like done and dried side by side with the other one. All right, let's get this. It's been printed. Let's get this carded open-ended shirt here on the dryer. And I'm going to do it the same like I do my others. Not very much pressure. Just kind of sitting right on top of the shirt there. 340 so degrees for around 65 seconds or so. All right, she's done. Let's take a look. I said 65 seconds. I meant 75-ish, 80 seconds or so. 340-some degrees at 75-ish seconds is usually pretty good for drying. All right, so we have our side-by-side -side comparisons. We have a carded, open-ended uh, T-shirt here, kind of your standard budget shirt. Then we have a, a high-quality ring spun shirt here. And looking at it through the camera at first glance doesn't look like too much of a difference. But let's bring the camera down and take a look. Notice the white on there. Not terrible, but certainly not as good as here. And that is noticeably different. And if you can't tell on the camera, I can tell you, looking at it with my own two eyeballs, that there is a difference. A considerable difference. This is where people would say, hey, John, those, brights just aren't, those whites just aren't that bright. And you, the only solution here is to try to lay down more white ink or put down more pre-treat. In either case, it's going to cost you more money. This shirt only costs maybe 50 cents more, and we get considerably better whites. I mean, that looks like a double strike white, and that is like a level six, and that's level five. I mean, that is white, as white as it gets, folks. That's the solution right there. Save yourself some time. Save yourself some money. Use a good quality shirt, and you're going to get beautiful prints like that every single time, I promise you. Thanks for watching this Digital Monday. Next week, we're going to mix it up a little bit. We've been doing DTG for a while. Let's get into some dye sublimation and have some fun with that. Thanks for watching. Make sure you just subscribe. Watch all the other videos on the Epson F2100 stuff that I've been doing. We do a lot of rolling stuff. We do a lot of Epson dye subs, so we're doing it all. Um, but I think we knocked out a lot of this, uh, these issues with the F2100 that people are having by following those three simple steps. Make sure you have a good nozzle check. Make sure you pre-treat properly and make sure you use a good quality shirt. You can do those things and you're going to get beautiful prints every time.